All right, let us spin the wheel and see which league we are playing next. Calibrated Blast. All right, time to turn off my brain for the next two hours. All right, so Calibrated Blast. This is a deck built around the card Calibrated Blast. What does that card do? It is a two mo is a three mana red instant that says you reveal cards on the top of your library until you reveal a non-land card. Put the revealed card on the bottom of your library in a random order. When you reveal a non-land card this way, it deals damage equal to that card's mana value to any target, and it can be flashed back for five mana. So you therefore play a bunch of really expensive spells like Sign of Draco at 12, and then Shadow of Mortality, a Tocton Worm, and Emrakul at 15. You will never cast any of these spells, and they're rather better as random hits off of Calibrated Blast. You can cast Sign of Draco, but you know, you don't really want that. Additionally, the deck plays Throws of Chaos, which has Cascade, and that's all it does. It cascades, and it can be retraced from your graveyard. So, between Calibrated Blast and Throws of Chaos, you have a fair number of Calibrated Blasts. The idea is that you Calibrated Blast your opponent, and then you hope they take 15 to 12 damage. And if they're not dead by that point from Fetch Shocking or whatever, you can just flash back Calibrated Blast or cast Throws of Chaos and do it again to kill them. Of course, you can also fail, where Calibrated Blast reveals either another Calibrated Blast or Throws of Chaos, and then that's not very good. I guess this thing can also deal damage to any target, so if you need to kill a creature for some reason, you can do that too. What are the lands in the deck? The lands are, well, it's your typical suite of, you know, fetch lands and whatnot, but what's this? There's 38 lands. Yeah, that's because the only thing we care about is casting Calibrated Blast. So apart from the usual Fetch Shock, etc., we have Sun Scorch Desert, which caps for colorless and deals one damage to target player Planeswalker when it enters the battlefield. So if you're a little bit short of dealing lethal to your opponent off the Calibrated Blast, these can sometimes get there. You also, in the same vein, have Ramanop Ruins, which can be sacrificed, or you can sacrifice another one of your deserts to deal two to your opponent. You also have the card Desert, which is a desert that you can sacrifice to Ramanop Ruins but you can also use it to deal one damage to target attacking creature, which you can only activate during the end of combat step. So they have to have hit you with it first, but then you can ping them. So this pings primarily Ragavan, but I guess maybe other stuff. And then there's also Beseju who shelters all. What do you do if you run into a counter spell deck and they just counter your calibrated blasts? You use Beseju who shelters all and then they're, in, and then they're uncounterable. And then there's a few other lands in here like Odawara and Beseju and Scavenger Grounds to get rid of graveyards. Anyway, in the sideboard we have Karuga, because this deck is capable of playing that, and I don't know, maybe you'll play it sometimes. You have Crime and Punishment to deal with those pesky artifacts and enchantments. And then you have a bunch of lands, which are Besejus for more, you know, Beseju action, the other Beseju for counterspell decks, more deserts, Nefalia Academy, which says if a spell or ability an opponent controls causes you to discard a card, you reveal that card and put it on top of your library instead of putting it anywhere else, so you bring this in against Hand Disruption, so they can never get rid of Calibrated Blast with Thoughtseize, and then one Odawara. Also, because Crime and Punishment is a split card, it seems its mana value is technically 7, so it's not so bad if you hit it off Blast. Anyway, let us run the league with the Calibrated Blast deck. Alright, round one on the play with Calibrated Blast. I would like to play. I'll reveal Karuga. Um, well, this hand has a Calibrated Blast in it, so I guess we're keeping it. So we keep. I assume the deck is like Tron, where if the deck has a Tron hand, you just keep Tron. Alright, play Spar's Headquarters. Pass the turn. Our opponent plays Spire Bluff. We are playing against Murktide, almost likely. Alright, well, let's play Desert so we can kill this Ragavan. Now they have to read Desert. Urza's Saga. Okay, so maybe it's Grinding Breach. Yep, Grinding Station. I've mulled down to two before if it had a blast in hand because you're likely to draw lands as your first two draws. Yeah, that's what I figured. Are they going to attack us with this Ragavan? All right, they're not. Well then, what, what shock lands are in our deck? I don't even remember. I assume they're red. Blood Crypt, Basic Mountain, and a Stomping Ground. Okay. Um, yeah, so just Foothills, Fetch, and then just Mountain. All right, Blast you. What do we hit? What did we hit? Calibrated Blast Sign of Draco. All right, take 12. Pass the turn. Why not wait to blast? Oh, is this an instant? I'm learning all kinds of things today. Why is this an instant? All right, well, Ragavan hits us, sure. It's so weird how grinding stations untap trigger happens even when it enters the battlefield. I know, right? And uh, many years later, when they printed Ka uh, Kappa Cannon here, they forgot the lesson again. Iteration. Does grinding breach run counter spells? I'm not sure. I don't think they do. The one ring entered the exile zone, so but they can't play it. All right, so let's just... Play Scalding Tarn, hold up both Sokens on an Odawara, and then just flashback Blast next turn. 
Proceed. There's a Saga trigger. I get Amber. All right. Grinding station trigger. Tap for iteration. Sure. Bobble entered the exile zone. All right. Sack the treasure. Play iteration. Mox Amber entered the exile zone. All right. Then they mill themselves. Play Bobble. Trigger the grinding station. All right. Sack the Bobble. Cast the Amber. Is there a reason they're not just... All right. Why wouldn't they just mill themselves? I guess, did they bobble themselves and they know the top card of their deck? All right, fetch. On the off chance that somehow we don't win next turn, I'm going to bounce Station back to their hand. All right, bobble trigger. Play this land. Pay the life. We have another mountain? No, we don't. Oh, let's grab uh, Blood Crypt. Doesn't matter. Let's grab Stomping Ground for Besage, I guess. Yep. All right, blast you. What did we reveal? Throws of Chaos. We revealed Throws of Chaos. So they don't die, so we will kill Ragavan. All right. Pass the turn. All right, opponent plays another, sh plays a shock land, plays expressive iteration, and they've conceded. Not really sure why. We had nothing to follow that up with, but all right. Uh, they're breach, so these are good, and besages are good. Uh, does breach sideboard encounters? I assume they do. Grinding breach, force negation, spell pierce. Yeah, all right. So bring in besaju, and deserts have to be good because of Ragavan, Odawara. All right, what are we cutting to play all of that stuff? Scavenger Grounds is actually useful. I assume I have to cut a bunch of lands for this stuff. So Cyan Draco is completely worthless as a attacker here. It is another expensive thing to hit though. I'm bringing in primarily lands, so I assume I have to cut lands to do that. But I also need a certain amount of red mana. Yeah, this might actually be hard as far as what in the world do you sideboard out. We need to cut 11 cards. I will cut Scion, I'll cut uh, some amount of lands. We're on the draw this game, so Gemstone Caverns is still good. Let's see. Two of these. Maybe this is overboarding. Maybe you don't need all four deserts, even against Ragavan dot deck. Um, and then what else? How much red lands do I have here? So I probably want to cut like some amount of fetches. Nah, probably not. Let's cut one of the blood crypts. All right, I'm just going to assume that that's correct. Reveal Karuga. All right, we have a calibrated blast in hand, so we will keep this hand. I'm going to use gemstone caverns. This requires black and green, right? Yeah. All right, reveal this. What am I exiling with it? Just one of the fetches? All right, yeah, one of the fetches. Opponent casts Bobble. Opponent cracks Bobble. Opponent plays Sacred Foundry. Opponent plays Ragavan. Bobble trigger. All right, I guess we just play Spara's Headquarter. Maybe not. We just play... I can go fetch the land that I need off of this anyway, so I just play Scalding Tarn Pass. This is equal to, right? Destroy each artifact creature enchant with mana value X. All right. Scalding Tarn. Pass the turn. And now we're going to get hit by Ragavan, which is, which is fine. Revealed Shadow of Mortality. All right. Your life total is less than your starting life total. This spell costs X less to cast for X is the difference. Saga, Amber. Okay, we're definitely blowing all these up next turn. So fetch. We need to grab Blood Crypt or Stomping Ground. One of the two. It doesn't matter which one. I guess we just grab the Triome. No, let's grab uh, Stomping Ground tapped. All right, and then rather than casting Blast, I think I'm just going to zero to kill all of this stuff. So uh, black, green, X is zero, cast this. All right, well, we got rid of most of their mana. So then let's just play Scalding Tarn past the turn. All right, Ragavan exiles, Arid Mesa, Mox Amber, all right, fetch. Let's put Blood Crypt in tapped, and then back to us. We drew that. All right, Sun Scorch Desert, target you. And then I'm going to blast on upkeep in case they draw counters. Actually, do I even need to do that? No, yeah, let's blast on upkeep. And then if I hit something small, I'll just shoot Ragavan instead. All right, blast. Cast, cast, cast. Oh, they do have the spell pierced. All right, it is spell pierced. All right, we take another hit from Ragavan. They exile gemstone caverns. Land. Well, at least they're hitting us very slowly. It's X less to cast where X is the life total, right? Is the difference. So this costs eight less. So this is five mana. So I can actually play this right? So if I try to cast it, it's going to say, oh, pay seven. No. Okay. So I'm, I'm wrong. All right. Well, um, land and then pass it back and do the same thing. They fetch with flooded strand. They grab steam vents tapped upkeep, fetch, find a mountain, cast calibrated blast. All right. What did we hit? Throws of chaos. So we're at 11. So this costs nine less. So it costs six. It still has to be correct to just shoot Ragavan, right? All right, so now they are down to, they have no Amber Mana. Breach, and then they can Breach back Mishra's Bobble just to draw some more cards. Cast Ragavan, and then that's it. So if I fetch now, I go to 10. This costs 5, right? 
I go to 10, it costs 10 less, it costs five, and then I can just, all right, so fetch, uh, grabbing, I don't think it matters, grabbing just the mountain so I can cycle this later, and then play Shadow of Mortality. All right, pass the turn. Somehow, okay, I want you to look at this art and then realize that somehow this creature does not have flying. All right, they play Urza Saga. All right, let's just attack them, I suppose. Swing. It has wall climbing. All right, they take that. Let's just cycle Sparas. Cycle, cycle, cycle. All right, well, Ramanop Ruins go. Maybe it was correct to hold the Ramanop Ruins instead so that they might not have blocked next turn. All right, they attack with Ragavan. We get hit. They revealed Throws of Chaos. Darn, we wanted that. All right, so now they're just going to hold Karnstruct. So attack, they make a Karnstruct to block. Yeah, all right. Swing. Karnstruct. Block us. Yeah, that's fine. Karnstruct dies. All right, play this tapped. Get Karuga. We can't actually play Karuga, so we'll just pass the turn now. So Saga goes up to three. What are they going to do? Make a Karnstruct. And then fetch what? Bobble to draw a card, probably. They already have two Ambers. Yeah, Bobble to draw a card. They are attacking with Ragavan. Sure. We go to six. They exiled Odawara. Bobble. All right, I think we're actually going to cast our companion this game. We drew Arid Mesa, so play Karuga. So that's this color, this color, and then colorless, red, red. All right, draw a card, right? Yeah, we drew a card. So then I will play one, two, three, four. Yeah, okay. Uh, play Arid Mesa, attack with the shadow. The rare plan Z beat down. Yeah, they block. All right, their construct dies. Pass the turn. Opponent cast the ring. Draws with the ring. Plays Emery. All right, passes it back to us. Well, I guess we just pass it back to them, right? All right, pass it back. Ring trigger. Go to eight. Draw with the ring. Play an island. Emery targets Mox Amber. Sure. Cast Mox Amber. Underworld breach. And then we just die from here, I guess, right? Because then they just breach all of the... No, they don't have grinding station, right? So they need grinding station. Okay, well, now they have grinding station. And then they'll just keep getting back. Mox Amber's over and over. Okay, yeah, they got us. On to game three. So we're on the play now. So Gemstone Caverns comes out. And then Sign of Draco back in. And then I I guess I want Desert for Ragavan. What do I cut for that? I don't really want to cut anything. Um, I'm just going to run this back. Submit. I would like to be on the play. Reveal Karuga. We have nothing in hand, so we will mull this. We have two blasts. Seems good. Keep, put Emrakul back in the deck. Uh, play a mountain, pass the turn. Opponent cracks, flooded strand, steam vents. Plays Ragavan. Reduce Cyan Draco, which we can't play. So, Ramanop ruins, pass the turn. Ragavan attacks us to 18. Exile's Shadow. Urza Saga. Mox Amber. White, blue, colorless to fairy. All right, so we have to do it on our turn then. All right, well, uh, let's just play Sun Scorched and then blast them. They had Spell Pierce up. Amazing. All right, so Saga goes to two. Take a hit from the Ragavan. They exile Emrakul. They bounce Amber with the Fairy and then have extra mana off of it, basically. Make a Karnstruct. Play Amber. Opponent plays a Tap Land. All right, well, let's play Boseju and then just cast this Blast, I suppose. Calibrated Blast. We revealed a Calibrated Blast. Amazing. All right, well, I think we are probably just supposed to shoot them so that next turn when we flash when we flash it back, we can try to hit them for lethal. All right, they're at 14 and pass the turn. Make a Karnstruct on upkeep. Oh, they can grab Graveyard Hate now, can't they? No. All right, well, they just grabbed a Bobble. Play a Bobble. Now we're taking a lot of damage from these. So we go to eight, and then we have to kill them on the next hit. Exiled Arid Mesa, plus to fairy. Play a Breeding Pool, tapped. Crack Bobble, Crack Bobble. And then both the Bobble triggers go off. That's fine. All right, so there's no way that we can prevent them from killing us. I mean, I guess we can like Odawara or something, or no, we can like besage you one of their constructs, but then we're in the same position next turn anyway. So, all right, let's just uh, go for the flashback. This has to kill them. We revealed Shadow of Mortality. All right, so this is 15. We did it. First win down with Calibrated Blast. Woo, 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 woo. On to round two. Reveal Karuga. We're on the draw. We have Calibrated Blast, so we'll keep this. What do I have to fetch to play Scion next turn? I have Blood Crypt, and then I have to fetch Sparas. Yeah. Opponent plays Grove of the Burn Willows and Harden Scales. All right. Well, we know what's happening. So we'll play Arid Mesa and pass. Opponent plays Stirrings, reveals Walking Ballista, plays Ink Moth, 
play Zabaz. All right, let's go fetch Sparrows. All right, Shock, Blood Crypt, cast Scion of Draco. Pass it back. So now they're playing what? Carpluzin, double colorless, play Ballista. Ballista has two counters, and it costs them red to blow up their own stuff, right? So if I attack, they can just block with Zabaz, modular, put two more counters on Ballista. All right, um... It's probably better to just not do that. So let's, I guess, just go Sun Scorched, hold up Blast slash Beseju past the turn. Yeah, that seems correct. So Sun Scorched, hit them, and then just pass it back. All right, Grove of the Burn Willows. And they have two cards left in hand. Playing Ravager. All right, so what's the math on this? They have Ravager. They, it comes in with two counters. They can activate and sack Ink Moth. They get four counters. Then they can sack Zabaz. And modular, modular is all the counters, right? So they have four, they sack Zabaz. Zabaz puts three counters on Ravager. They have seven counters. And then if they sack the Ravager, the Ravager puts eight counters on Ballista. That's still not enough. So what is the alternative here? We just blast walking Ballista. We can just blast them twice. So let's just allow this to resolve. I guess they put all the counters on Ink Moth, right? But we can blast that too. One mana, activate Ink Moth. We can also just block Ink Moth, right? Yeah. Attack all out here. Well, I'm just going to block Ink Moth. Yeah, block Ink Moth or block Walking Ballista. Which one is better to block? I guess this one, because then they have to sack it first. So just block here. So if they do nothing, I just let the damage happen. But I assume they'll, you know, they'll at the very least sack Ballista. Sack Zabaz. Modular onto here. That's fine. Five counters. Ravager. Maybe I was supposed to block Ink Moth. I'm not sure. Do I just let this damage go through? Yeah, so I just let the damage go through and then I calibrated Blast and I hit something small, I'll just hit Ballista. All right, let the damage go through. Cast Calibrated Blast. We revealed Shadow of Mortality. So just shoot you for 15. So if I Blast now, I can potentially just kill them. The only way I don't kill them is if I reveal another Blast. The alternative is what? Casting Besaju on Walking Ballista. They move, they shoot me for... Four down to fifth down to fourteen down to fifteen, and then Ravager has six counters, and then they can probably just kill me with Ink Moth next turn. So let's let's just blast now, I guess. Yeah. All right. Let's just go for it. Revealed Shadow Mortality. Shoot you. All right. Game two. Bring in Crime Punishment. Probably all their stuff costs two. So bring in Beseju. Bring in Odawara. Deserts are mostly useless. Bring Crime and Punishment in. Cut the Desert, cut the Desert. What does Scales play post-board? Do they have any counters? Force of Vigor? No? All right. Six, uh, four cards to go back. Let's cut. Um, is Crime and Punishment actually good here? All their stuff costs two, except for Scales, which costs one. We're also on the draw. Maybe it's just not good here. All right. And then cut a land, which is, uh, they don't have counter spells, so we don't need Besage you. All right, that's probably fine. Submit. Uh, reveal Karuga. What do you think the red is for? The red is for activating Zabaz or potentially Galvanic Blast or something. All right, we do not have it, so we will mull this hand. Thank you for the uh, subscription, Tree Derpa. All right, Mulligan. We have a Blast. I assume I'm just supposed to keep any hand that has Blast, so that's what we're doing. Although we do have to draw, like, another Blast or a Throws or we're probably dying. So keep, throw this back. Pendlehaven, Harden Scales. All right, we do Shadow, so let's just play Land Pass. Ink Moth. Play Ballista. All right, what do I want? The lands don't really matter, right? I guess Stomping Ground. All right, Ballista, two counters. Well, that's a Besaju, which we might have to actually use. Well, we're going to use it because we have a third land anyway. So land and then go. They are going to combat. I'm probably Besajuing either Ink Moth or Scales, so I'll just let them hit me. All right, we go to 17. They cast the Boz. All right, let's just respond to that with with Scale to, by killing the Scales then, I think. Grab a mountain, besage you the scales. All right, basic forest. The boss enters with one counter. They pay two. Play hanger back. That's fine. All right, land go. Besage you. Playing arcbound worker. They can't sack any of their stuff. All right, so we take four, or they're just going to put a counter on hanger back. Yep, that's fine. Pump that. All right, I guess we do it now. They have no other actions, so I'm going to just calibrated blast, and then if I hit something small. Maybe I want to shoot their guys. Calibrated Blast. We revealed Emrakul. All right, we're just shooting them. All right, that's all good. We take uh, four, go to 11. 
All right, we're one turn away. I can besage you if I need to, so let's just pass back. All right, hanger back grows. They play what? They drew a Ozolith. So it's basically another scales. So what can they do now? They still can't blow up any of their guys, so it's fine. So put a counter there, and then what? They attack for four, five, six, seven, eight, and then kill us with Ballista, so we have to do it now. So yeah. All right, channel, let's besage you there. Then they shoot us to nine, and we take one, two, three, four, and go to five. And then we have to draw a fifth land or blast or throws. Is this a sorcery speed activation? Yeah. All right. Oh, they're shooting worker, so they can modular double. All right. So they put it on itself, and then they're shooting us. They're shooting the boss. All right. That's fine. So we're going down to six, and then four from the hangar back. We take two, we go to four. All right, I'm going to fetch now to get a Triumph out of our deck so we don't draw a tap land. All right, we need to draw another land. We drew a land. All right, let's go for it. Revealed Throws of Chaos. Oh, man. We're one short. Oh, they didn't even wait to see what we hit. Well, on to round three. Yeah, we hit Throws of Chaos, so it would have been at one. So I would have actually just shot Hanger back. Opponent just saw Calibrated Blast and then conceded prematurely. All right, round three on the play with Calibrated Blast. I would like to play Reveal Karuga. We have nothing in hand, so we'll mull this. We have a Blast in hand, so we'll keep this and put back Emrakul. All right, um, just play Foothills past the turn. Swamp, fetch, put uh, Blood Crypt into play. Land, go. I guess I should have grabbed a Triome in case I drew Scion of Draco. All right, fetch. Opponent casts Shadow of Doubt. There's a card you don't see every day. All right, well then, um, all right, play this go. We have Demolition Field, and they're going to demo us on our draw step. This actually lets me cast Calibrated Blast here. Awesome. All right, so float a red, use the ability, grab shadow, grab a mountain. They're grabbing a swamp. All right, cast Calibrated Blast. I guess I don't even have to do that now, right? Yeah. All right, so go to the main, play Sun Scorch Desert, shoot them, and then just pass to their turn. Coffers, make four mana, play Shieldred. All right. All right, Calibrated Blast. We revealed Throws of Chaos. Amazing. Well, we can't hit Shieldred with that anyway, so we'll just shoot them. Well, alrighty then. And then Shieldred triggers. All right, let's just play this and let's put Karuga in our hand. Go ahead. And now opponent goes up to 17. And if they have the ring, we're pretty screwed. They have the ring. All right. Then draw, gain up to 19. Shieldred attacks us to 12. Then we go down to 10 from the draw step. All right, well, play this, and then I guess just pass with flashback up. Or do I just do it now and kill Shieldred? I don't know. I guess stop on upkeep, and then... The problem is the Shieldred's just going to gain them life out of here, so I have to just kill Shieldred, right? When's the best time to do it? They untap, and then they can just always respond to me doing that. So I have to at least try before they attack me. So is it better to just do it now because I'm not racing them? Let's assume I blast on their upkeep and I hit them for 15, they go to four. Then the, then they just activate the ring. The, the ring triggers and puts them to three. Then they activate the ring and they go to uh, seven. And then we're just never ever racing them. So I think it's probably better to just blast them on upkeep and just hope we draw another blast because we're never out racing this. All right, cast calibrated blast. We revealed sign of Draco. All right, well, yeah, we just have to draw another blast. So shoot them. And they go to 8, and they can go up to 12 off of the ring. Attack with Shieldred. We go to 6. So we have to draw another Blast right now. And if they have another ring, then we can't win. Karn. And then they can Karn for a ring. So the Stone Brain. Oh, they're just going to Stone Brain Calibrated Blast out of our deck? Well, we're dead to that. So on to the next game. All right. Coffers. I can besage you Urborg slash Coffers, but that seems like a poor way of interacting with them. So what else do I want? Okay, Desert is completely useless. Uh, I want Nefalia Academy to fight Hand Disruption. So that comes in. Uh, Odawara to bounce Shieldred out of, the, out of the way. Beseju is basically useless. Doesn't blow up the One Ring. And taking them off of a little bit of mana is not great either. It's also possible that they bring in other artifacts that we need to kill though. So we don't want to cut all of our Besejus. And then these are also not good. So... They don't have counter spells, so cut that. What's the last cut? Their graveyard basically doesn't matter, so we can cut this. Actually, we're on the play, right? So we can cut gemstone caverns right now and then bring them back in next game. So I guess a desert. Maybe it's just better to have untapped lands just in case. Hmm. 
I basically can't think of anything I want to besage you from them. Let's bring Desert in because it's untapped. All right, submit. On the play, reveal Karuga. We have Throws of Chaos in our hand, which means we keep it. It is slow. We don't get it until turn four, though. But, I mean, what else are we doing? It's also immune to hand disruption. All right, keep this. Leyline of the Void. Well, never mind. Um, let's play Sparrows in case I draw... Well, I don't want to play Sparrows just for Sion Draco. And just fetch land, go. Field of Ruin. Relic of Regenitus, sure. They're really leaning on the graveyard hate. Put, um... So I guess I want Besaidu for these. Put in Blood Crypt. All right, draw. Play another fetch land, pass the turn. Opponent plays Castle Lockdwain tapped. All right, fetch. Let's grab Stomping Ground. Well, we have two cyclers, so let's just play Sunswarched Desert. Shoot them. And then we're just going to cycle Rafine's Tower. So pass it back. Plays Urborg and seemingly doesn't do anything else. All right, cycle this. All right, we drew Blast. So is it better to just Blast? No, it's better to... Their Field of Ruining our land in our draw step. So if I want to Blast, I guess it makes no difference. I'm just going to pass the turn, Blast them. All right, so that resolves. Get a Mountain. And then just pass and Blast in response. Cabal Coffers, they make four and potentially five mana. All right, Shieldred, sure. All right, cast Blast, end of step. We revealed Throws of Chaos. Ugh. All right, we shoot them. They're at 15. They can actually draw out of the other Blast with Shieldred in play with Relic. So they go to 15, then it's back to us. So if I Throws, and even if I hit a 15 thing, they then just draw with Relic and go back up. So we have to have Runner Runner, basically. Or the alternative is to just not do it now and hope to draw Besage you for this, but that's not going to be actually useful. I guess I can Throws now, and then if they don't find more... No, okay, so they Relic, they go to 2, If even if we hit a 15. Then they draw for their turn and go up to 4, and then Ramen Up Runes doesn't kill them anymore. Yeah, I think we're probably dead here, unless we hit, like, back-to-back -back Blasts. So let's just play Desert and then Throws. Cascade Trigger, hit Blast. Calibrated Blast revealed Shadow. So just target them. And they pop Relic. Yep. They go to two, and then they untap, go to four. Play Field of Ruin. And then attack us down to 12. They had no ring play. <gasps> we happened to draw a Blast. Amazing. All right, so as long as we just don't hit Blast, then we kill them. All right, so play Desert past the turn. Orcish Bowmasters. Mm-hmm. Blast you. Cyanodraco, lethal. We did it. All right, we're on the draw this game. So put back all the gemstones. All right, we want Besage you to stop Leyline of the Void. And then deserts suck. Cut the deserts. What else? Uh, two of the Sokanzons can go, I guess. What else on here goes? They're the Scavenger Grounds, right? Their graveyard is irrelevant. Scavenger Grounds. All right, submit. Reveal Karuga. We have nothing. We will mold us. We have a Blast, but we only have one land. Let's, let's mold this. All right, we have Blast and enough lands, and we have Nefalia Academy to protect from uh, hand disruption. So let's keep this, put back Shadow, put back... Ooh, what are we... Because we're going to put Gemstone into play, right? So put back one of the Nefalia Academies. They have Leyline. All right, so Gemstones, and then probably just the basic Mountain. All right, Swamp. Okay, they didn't have hand disruption. So now we will play Nefalia Academy and pass the turn. Field of Ruin. Well, there's Besaidu. So let's just put fetch land down and then we're going to besage you the ley line on the end of their turn and then blast. All right, demolition field. All right, besage you this. And then I guess I don't want to fetch right now. So, all right. Ooh, another besage you. They're going to do this in our draw step. Sure. Let's, I guess, just not float anything. Yeah, that resolves. We get a mountain. And then do I want to shock this in? I guess I do. Shock this in. Go. I'm surprised they didn't target Nefalia. All right, Coffers, make a bunch of mana, ring. All right, do it now. We revealed Shadow. 15 you. Relic. Oh, they can't pop it, though. Whew. Uh, do I fetch now? I guess if I want to cast... I'm just going to blast them again immediately, right? So, yeah, all right. Draw. All right, exile the Gemstone Caverns. All right, fetching. Blood Crypt. Yes, fetch. Blood Crypt. All right, let's see if we get there. On their up... We have to do it on their upkeep, right? Yeah. So, ring trigger. Blast you. We revealed Sion of Draco. All right. Opponent draws with the ring just to see if they can find an answer. Draws with Relic. What can they do? They can Bowmaster and then like march their Bowmaster. Or yeah, March of Wretched Sorrow, their Bowmaster. All right. And then they go up to eight and they're still dead. Huzzah! 
3-0 with calibrated blasts so far. On to round four. All right, round four. Reveal Karuga. Double blast in hand. Looks pretty good. They revealed Gigantha. All right, keep. We're on the draw. Spire Bluff Canal. So they're all in all likelihood shadow. Ooh, and throws a chaos. All right, so let's grab what? Just play Scalding Tarn and then fetch one of our Triumphs. Yeah, so pass to the opponent. End step consider. So we're gonna fetch, um, we're gonna fetch Spar's headquarters, and then if we untap and find Blood Crypt or a fetch land, we can play Sign of Draco. Fetch Spar's, right, untap. We did not draw that, so we will just play a mountain. All right, play a mountain. Now let's play Sun Scorch. Doesn't matter. Now let's just play a mountain. And then pass the turn. Opponent fetches Blood Crypt. And they're gonna Bowmasters. Yep. So their Grixis Shadow, so they should have some combination of like Spell Pierce or other counter spells. We get attacked, we go to 16. Opponent does nothing, just plays a land. All right, well, let's play, I guess, Ramanop Ruins and then just pass back to them and then blast them at end of turn. Opponent flashes in Bowmasters. All right, I'm gonna do this now while they're unlikely to have counter spells. We revealed Shadow. All right, take 15. Down to two. Bowmasters trigger, we go to 15 and they have four power in play. Fetching down to one, grabbing a mountain, bolting us. So none of their fetch lands are on anymore. And now we can just kill them with Sun Scorched on our turn. Play a tap Watery Grave, Ledger Shredder. All right, Sun Scorched, got him. On to game two. So I'm assuming this is Death Shadow. So we want Deserts. We want Basajus. We potentially even want Nefalia Academy if they're running Thoughtseize and whatnot. Um, what else? So it depends on exactly what they have and whether they have DRC or Murktide, then Scavenger Grounds could be relevant. It depends on, let's cut Sokens on, let's cut. All their stuff is super cheap, so I don't want to Odawara it. It also depends on what sideboard hate they have for what we're doing. Let's look at Shadow. That's Shadow. They might have Leyline of the Void, but they might not. I think it's unlikely. They're probably just bringing counter spells in. So don't need Beseju. And we need to cut some more lands. They're naturally going to hurt themselves a whole bunch for Shadow. So we probably want as many lands that hurt them as possible. Then what else can we cut? We need to make four cuts. Do I just cut fetches? I'm going to assume Odawara is not that useful. Let's cut. So can all the fetches grab all the shocks and triomes? They can, right? So then let's just cut Wooded Foothills, I guess. All right, let's submit this. All right, game two on the draw versus what is in all likelihood Grixis Death Shadow. Reveal Karuga. We do not have Blast, so we will mull this. Mulligan. We still don't have Blast, so we'll mulligan again. All right, we have Blast. Keep, and we may actually want Shadow of Mortality in our hand. So let's put back one of the Deserts and the Scalding Tarn, one of the Scalding Tarns. Done. Cracking Scalding Tarn. Basic Mountain. Play Ragavan. Haha, -ha, we have the counter to your Ragavan. Feast your eyes on this desert. All right, they're attacking anyway. And then we can't activate this now, right? Yeah, no. So do I have to put a stop on my end of combat? Activate only during the end of combat. Ragavan trigger. Activate the desert. Kill this. What'd they even exile? They exiled the land. All right. Blue. Red. Ledger Shredder. All right. And DRC to trigger connive. Conniving away a Ragavan. All right. Bobble. Surveilling a land. Bobble trigger or bobble activation. All right. Bobble is good. And then we will just play Besage you so that we have this unmolested next turn. Proceed, opponent. Watery Grave, tapped. Another DRC. All right. Attacking with both of these. Sure. No blocks. Damage, desert, your DRC. It dies. I'm surprised they did that then. All right. Do we just shock Blood Crypt in and then... Yeah, let's shock Blood Crypt in and then we'll Besage you on their turn. All right, Shock and Blood Crypt, pass. Opponent casts Expressive Iteration. All right, so Darcy gets Delirium now. They exiled a land. How much is Shadow gonna cost next turn? We're at 13, Besaju activation, we go to 11. They're gonna hit us for five and we go to six. And then we have to fetch Shock down to three and we're very close to being dead. The problem is we, we don't have another Blast next turn. So I think it may actually be correct to Blast Ledger Shredder and then we'll be able to play it. All right, so they attack. So let's say I blast and I kill Ledger Shredder. This takes me to three. Masaju takes me to eight. I untap. I fetch shock. I'm at five. This costs 15 less and is therefore free. All right, 
blast revealed throws of chaos yeah so we're definitely just shooting ledger shredder although i guess they can connive it in response so i guess we're just going to shoot darcy then all right shoot darcy all right we take two we go to nine so i have to fetch shock the other blood crypt i go to six this is 14 less it is two mana seems fine and the next turn we blast all right so play this fetch shock grab the other blood crypt and then cast this all right go ahead opponent they fetch they play an island Flashing in bow masters, sure. So then they shoot us to five. I guess if they have bolt, we're dead, right? All right, they go to combat. They just attack with the ledger shredder. Mm-hmm, can't block. We go to three and then bolt. All right, game three. So now we're on the play. So all the gemstones that come out and then the foothills come back in. And I guess one of the Sokanzons comes back in. All right, submit. I would like to be on the play. Reveal Karuga. Uh, we have nothing, mole. We have still nothing, mole. We still have nothing. All right, mole to four. We still have nothing, mole to three. All right, there's blast, so keep this. Uh, what do we have? So let's put back, I have to put back four cards. So I'm keeping blast and two lands. So Sion goes back, uh, let's see. I need red mana, so I have to keep one of the mesas. So that goes back, that goes back. And then I guess keep desert to stop Ragavan. All right, done. Play Arid Mesa, go. Opponent plays Spire Bluff and passes to us. All right, play the Desert, pass the turn. Casts Consider, puts Underworld Breach in the graveyard. Opponent plays Scalding Tarn, passes. All right, do I want to fetch this now? I grab what? Both of the Triumphs are not red, so I guess I don't. All right, play this, pass the turn. Fetching, I wonder if I do this now. They still have a mana up, which means, well, Spell Pierce and Flusterstorm hit this regardless. Watery Grave. All right, stop on upkeep. Fetch. Blood Crypt. Fetch. The other Blood Crypt. Blast. And let's see if this resolves. It does not. It gets pierced. All right. So let's see. Shadow of Doubt costs seven mana right now, or eight mana right now. All right. Scalding Tarn. And then they just pass back to us. All right. Well, we drew another land. So if I fetch Shock, I go to 11. And then this costs nine less. So it costs uh, six. So I still can't play it. So just pass the turn. Opponent fetches, grabs steam vents, tapped, polluted delta. All right, back to us. Rafine's tower tapped. We do have to play that. Yeah, all right, so play this, pass the turn. Opponent cracks polluted delta, gets a steam vents tapped, gets blood crypt tapped. So fetch shock, 11, nine less, six. I still can't. So if I, if I do it now, if I draw an untapped land, I can play shadow. And then I still have access to blast next turn. I guess if I have an untap if I draw exactly stomping ground, then I can't do that. Alright, let's just take our turn. Alright, Sun Scorch Desert. So play this, ping you. And then right, eleven, that's becomes four, that's six mana. Alright. Grab stomping ground. Play this. Opponent end steps. Casts bow masters. Alright. We go to ten. They get two creatures. Now what? They're at sixteen. What game is this? This is game three against Death Shadow. I, well, I guess I'm assuming it's Death Shadow. I don't think we've seen a single Death Shadow all, all three games. Opponent cast or gets to Gauntha in hand. All right, another Shadow. All right, well, let's just attack and then play this other Shadow. Swing. I assume they just chump block. Yeah, all right. All right, cast this Shadow. Pass the turn. I'm surprised that these are both resolving, so they're not countering them, and they are not casting any removal to kill them. Maybe their only counter spells are like Spell Pierce or Fluster Storm, so they can't counter them, and then their only removal is like Bolt Heat, so they can't kill them with that either. What can our opponent have? They have Gigantha, six unknown cards. Opponent plays Underworld Breach, so they're just gonna Breach Consider. Casts Consider, puts Bobble in the graveyard, and now they can just Bobble for free to draw another card. But no, they cast Consider instead, all right? They bend a land, playing Bobble, playing another Bobble, cracking the first Bobble, cracking the second Bobble, and then they're gonna cast Consider again. Maybe they're just maybe they just don't have like spell pierce or fluster storm and they're just aggressively trying to dig for it. They did not surveil that one. One mana DRC. All right, so they have two blockers now. Breach trigger. They want shields down for that too. Both the bobbles trigger. I doubt they're playing force of negation. All right, we do sparas. So I guess we just attack and then we blast while their shields are down. All right, swing swing. They have to block both of them. They're not going to block one of them. Do they actually have Force Negation? All right, well, let's try. Calibrated Blast with Flashback. It resolved. We revealed Throws of Chaos. Well, I think I just shoot DRC then. All right, shoot DRC. 
pass the turn. So now there's no blockers for Shadow, at least. Unless, and well, they're obviously going to play more, but it also prevents them from getting surveils off all the spells that they're going to play this turn. New DRC. Cast Expressive Iteration. They have Delirium now. They did not surveil to the graveyard. Ragavan is exiled. All right. Combat. Nothing. Play Ragavan. And then go to the cleanup step and discard. They're discarding Gigantha. Sure. All right. Well, let's cycle Sparas with this, uh, this, and this. We drew Blast. Excellent. So let's play a land. And then go to attack. Swing, swing. They're blocking just with Ragavan. All right. So... If they don't have a counter spell, they lose. Should I do this now? If I do it now and they have spell pierce, then I probably just don't even need to do it now, right? Like they have, they don't have enough pressure. What would they have to do? They would have to like breach multiple bolts on us. They just keep pass. So they've passed this turn with like blue mana up. So I probably want, don't want to do it now. Like they're just dying to the shadows anyway. So I guess we just pass. And then if they try to kill us on their turn, we can always just blast them. Casting Bolt on us, Surveilling, sure. So we go to seven, then Darcy attacks us to four. And then I have to, I don't, I do not actually have to fetch in order to cast this. All right, so we take four, or we take three, we go to four. And then what are they gonna do? Casting Breach. So I guess I have to respond to that, right? Because now they can Bolt us twice. Yeah, so I have to respond to that. I guess I don't have to respond to that, right? I have to, so Breach enters. The problem is they can cast Consider in response if they don't have a counter spell. So yeah, I have to do this now. All right, do you have it? They have Spell Pierce. All right. So we die because now they just breach Bolt twice back onto us. GG, opponent. All right, we're still three and one. On to the last one. All right, we are on the draw. Reveal Karuga. Well, Blast is in hand, so we're going to keep it. Plays Tapped Breeding Pool. All right. Well, I guess we just play Arid Mesa past the turn. Flooded Strand. Crack. Plains. Falaji Archaeologist. Enters the battlefield, mill three cards. You may put a non-creature, non-land card milled this way into your hand if you don't get to plus one counter. Okay. Teferi and three and two lands. So they get Teferi into their hand. All right. I guess there's no reason to fetch now. I guess the reason to fetch now is so I don't draw more lands. So fetch, grab a blood crypt, I suppose. Um, all right. Just play mountain and pass the turn. Go ahead. So now they play Teferi, bounce their Falaji back to hand. Forest, play to fairy, bounce Falaji to hand. All right. Well, we can't do anything at instant speed anymore. Can I kill Teferi? I can, but do I even want to? What is it, what is the problem with them having a Teferi on the board? It isn't really. So I just keep shooting them, I guess. Yeah, all right, let's do that. Sun Scorch, shoot you. Cast Blast, revealed Emrakul, take 15. All right, opponent is at two. So if they fetch, we just kill them with Sun Scorched on our turn. It also means they can't play Shocklands untapped either. So if you're playing Calibrated Blast, this is exactly the kind of thing that you want to see. Four to five color mid-range soup with no counter spells. Plays Windswept Teeth. Pluses to Fairy. Cracks Windswept Teeth. All right, they're probably dead next turn. Casting the one ring. Aw. Casting the one ring. Gone, gone and ruined all our fun there, eh? All right, well, um, I guess we just play Scavenger Grounds and then pass the turn. Scavenger Grounds pass the turn. All right. They can't draw cards, though, because they die. So, unless they're doing it now. They don't have Omnath mana. So, hmm. Cosmic Rebirth, which gains them three life. All right. Oh, no. I could. I should have used Scavenger Grounds. I forgot I had that. No. Well, that's my bad. They're still at least at three. Logi. I was so caught off guard by we the weird cards they're playing. All right. They're still going to die now, though. All right. Sun Scorch. Put you to two. Flashback. Take the damage. Okay, this is definitely the four-color turns deck. There's a four-color turns deck? All right, well, um, hmm. So not Besaju. Desert is completely worthless in this matchup. I would assume they have counter spells to bring in, so let's bring in Besaju. And then we still have more stuff to bring in, so one of these Odawaras. All right, let's go with that. Game two on the draw. Reveal Karuga. We have no blasts, so we must mulligan. All right, we have Throws of Chaos. That is technically a blast. And we have two shadows, which maybe can get there. I guess we keep and put Emrakul back. All right. They are playing a Utopia Sprawl and naming white. All right. Well, I guess I'm playing, what, this first in case I draw Scion? Or do I just play a land or this land? Okay, let's just play this land, go. It's probably more useful to have these to cycle later 
I guess we have throws to retrace. All right, Teferi, no, Falaji with white for Ephemerate maybe. They're bringing back Force of Negation. Well, that's going to be an issue. Force of Negation. Did we win game one? Yes. Um, all right, just another fetch land go. Opponent plays. I assume this is Teferi Mana. I guess I actually do not want to. Cosmic Rebirth on Solitude. Sure. They're at 22 and have Solitude, Force of Negation in hand. Um, I'm going to fetch now to get the lands out of our deck. Blood Crypt, fetch the other Blood Crypt, and then take our turn. All right, let's do Sun Scorched and then just hold up Sparrows to cycle. Or do I shoot ourselves? How much do I need to get down to to cast Shadow? In order to cast this for, let's say, four mana, this needs, I need to be at nine life. All right, that's too far off, so we'll just shoot them. All right, and then just pass and cycle Sparrows. Opponent fetches, gets a tapped breeding pool, casts the one ring. All right, so we can't throw his next turn. Activates the one ring, plays a land, fetches with the land, grabs Temple Garden tapped. All right, cycle Sparrows. Well, we do Draco. I can make, I can put Sokens on tokens into play. Is that even useful? They have Solitude, so even if I do that, they're just going to cast Solitude next turn anyway, and then the tokens become useless. So yeah, I guess let's just play Gemstone Caverns, and then Sign of Draco costs 8 right now. All right, just pass the turn. Ring Trigger, go to 18. They drew more cards. What is this deck? Play Teferi, bounce the Falaji. So they get another ring, I guess, probably from here. Yeah, get the ring. Uh, let's see. If I do Sokens on, I can take Teferi off the board. That's not even good, though. So what's the alternative? I get in, like, one damage here, and then they just untap Solitude. It's probably just better to hold this as a land. Yeah, let's just hold this. They go to cleanup, discarding Falaji. All right, so I can fetch, put myself to 11, and then the Shadows cost 5. That's not... The Shadows cost 5, right? 11 or 4. And then I can just play them, but meh like they just have solitude i guess they no they have force of negation so i can't even throws them right i guess we just run out these shadows in that case all right so fetch shock the stomping ground and then cast this oh no i'm one off these cost six all right i guess that's fine do we take teferi off the board they have cosmic rebirth so they can just get it back anyway i guess that caught that forces them to at least spend the rebirth on teferi and not something else I just do not have good options here. Oh yeah, Cascade doesn't even work with Teferi on the board, so I need to take the Teferi off the board. So uh, channel this, and then go to combat, attack Teferi. All right, they're just letting it die. Rebirth is also instant speed, right? Yeah. So we're just never resolving Throws of Chaos because they can bring Teferi back at instant speed or cast Force Negation. Grabbing another land, tapped. Casting, Time Warp. All right, draw with the ring. Discarding... Eternal Witness and Solitude. Ring Trigger. Go to 12. Draw more cards with the ring. Play it to Fairy. Plus it without minusing. Another land. Are we getting time warped again? Or just ringed again? Opponent casts the ring. Opponent plays Utopia Sprawl on their forest and names Blue. All right. So, all right. So I play Rafine's Tower. Then Sign of Draco is four mana. So go to attack. Just attack to Fairy. Let me block one. To Fairy goes to four. And then... Yeah, just play this, play Draco. Oh, do I have all the types? I do, okay. Play Draco, and then I have Shadows next turn, I suppose. Ring Trigger. They just didn't draw. So they still have Force Solitude in hand. Witness, grabbing back the other Witness. No, not grabbing back the other Witness? I thought they grabbed that. Oh, they grabbed Time Warp. Okay, Time Warping, Ephemerating. Okay, so now they have infinite turns. All right, so they have infinite turns. We never get a turn, and they'll eventually just kill our board. All right, next game. So I assume this is still all correct. Maybe do I want Besage you? No, I can't think of a reason I'd want Besage you here. I guess we're on the play, so Gemstone Caverns is now a co just a colorless land. So there's no reason to not play at least one Besage you. Gemstone, and then I guess just lands that aren't legendary. Desert, Nefalia, doesn't really matter. I guess Nefalia is going to have absolutely no use, right? Vulnerability causes you to discard. You may reveal, yeah, okay, so just the other desert. Not that any of those will be useful, but... That is fine. All right, submit. So there are four color taking turns, I guess. On the play, reveal Karuga. We have a blast, so we will keep it. All right, um, play, play Arid Mesa Go. Opponent plays Windswept Heath, fetches, grabs a basic forest, plays Utopia Sprawl, chooses white. I do not see a reason to fetch right now, so we'll just take our turn. All right, Mountain Go. I guess I could kill, no, I, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, all right. 
Pass the turn. I was thinking like, oh, I can besage you their Utopia Sprawl, but no, that's stupid. All right, Teferi, pluses. So let's grab Blood Crypt, I guess. All right, grab the other Blood Crypt and let's try to blast them. It immediately resolved. We revealed the talk then, Worm. All right, take 15, go to four. They tap four, Balaji Archaeologist. And I assume they're just gonna put Time Warp in their hand now. No, they put Cosmic Rebirth in their hand. Another land, fetch down to three, get a land, play another Falaji, and now they're going to get Force Negation. Teferi bounces one of the Falajis, and so now they have Force back up, so we can't even hit them. All right, so we can't play Shadow, so I guess we just put Karuga in our hand and pass the turn. All right, play Mountain, get Karuga. Go ahead. Teferi plus. They cast the One Ring. Activate the One Ring to draw a card. Stack the Misty. All right, they are very low on life, although they can Cosmic Rebirth at instant speed to gain life. Throws of Chaos, which does nothing right now with Teferi in play. So this costs too much. Do we just run Karuga onto the board? There's nothing else to do. I guess so. Oh, wait, no, I can't even play Karuga. So in that case, I guess I just cycle Rafine's Tower and then, yeah. All right, pass the turn. Play a land. They're at one. So they do need to get this ring off the table and or, and or gain life. Cosmic Rebirth a land back. Yep, they're at four. Plus Teferi. Play another Philogy Archaeologist. And now they'll get Ring or Time Warp. Putting Time Warp in hand. Crack Misty to three. Play another Philogy. And then get Cosmic Rebirth in hand. So their hand is Cosmic Force. Uh, then one other card I know about. All right, Cycle. All right, Sign a Draco. So let's see. Let's just play Besaju. And then I still can't cast Shadow, right? Yeah. So, and then I just cast Scion. I can flashback the blast and then they'll just force it. How much does Scion cost right now? Eight mana? Oh, I can't cast it anyway. All right, well, let's just cast this and then they'll force it. Force pitching time warp, yep. All right, go to two. They still have rebirth in their hand. Teferi bounce the ring. All right, opponent time warps. So I'm pretty sure we're dead here. Even though they're at two, we have no way of actually killing them even if they pass it back to us because we can't cascade as long as Teferi's in play. We really can't play any of our creatures, and even if we could, they have so many cards in hand, they're going to be able to answer them. Opponent plays a land, tapped, obviously. So now they play the ring again. Cosmic Rebirth targeting force, or no, targeting what now? Something or other. I don't see it in the chat log. Ephemerate, mm-hmm. So how do they actually win once they, I mean, they can just beat you to death with Solitude, I guess, but Utopia Sprawl, casting the ring, plus the fairy, play a tap land. All right, we got another turn. So I can play... Scion, if I play the Sparrows, that doesn't seem very good. How much do these shadows cost right now? Nine. All right, cycle the Sparrows. All right, it's a land. Um, I don't have Stomping Ground yet, so I can fetch. If I'm at 11 life, these cost four, so I can actually cast Shadow. All right, fetch Shock, Stomping Ground, untapped. Play a Shadow. Oh no, I'm miscounting. 13, 11. Oh no, I need to be at nine for them to cost that much. Well, I still should Shock anyway. All right, pass the turn. All right, they draw with the Ring. Then a whole bunch of stuff happens. So they ephemerate and get another spell, and then they get ephemerate back. Opponent, cast, eternal witness. All right, now they win, because they have an ephemerate on rebound. They're witnessing back time warp, and then we die. All right, GG's. Well, another 3-2 to the books. So that was Calibrated Blast. It did Calibrated Blast things. Uh, yeah, not much more to say about that.